Hi, I'm Chaz Klimchak, host of Klimchak's Killer Collection, welcoming you to another night at the Trash TV Virtual Drive-In. In a few short moments, our projectionist will fire up tonight's double bill of horror. But first, allow me to explain the purpose of our virtual drive-in. The Trash TV Virtual Drive-In aims to preserve a part of American movie culture by presenting double bills of classic B-movies introduced by classic drive-in bumper films and classic movie trailers and broken up by classic drive-in intermission films and more movie trailers. So, while the crowd develops, Grab yourself a nice tall soft drink and a big tub of popcorn to prepare yourself for tonight's special double feature. Don't look in the basement and don't open the door. Both directed by S.F. Brownrigg and both starring most of the same theater ensemble cast. Don't look in the basement originally played the American drive-in circuit on a double bill with Wes Craven's Last House on the Left. So, let's sit back and enjoy tonight's double feature. I'm Chaz Klimchak, welcoming you to a night at the Trash TV Virtual Drive-In. Snuggle up, dig in, and get ready to get scared. Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm -hmm. so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, Go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. nightmares in the deep in your favorite horror movies but not in your living room on your TV don't let pay TV be the monster in your living room pay TV and cable TV companies are seeking the right to charge you for the very programs you now get free if you want to stop pay TV and save free television, sign the petition in the lobby of this theater. Let your lawmakers know how you feel in the fight against pay TV and cable TV. Symbols. We're all familiar with them. There are shortcuts to vital information. That's why, to familiarize you with the movie rating symbols which will be used by this theater, we present the following guide for parents and young people. It is designed to inform parents about the suitability of movie content for viewing by their children. G, all ages admitted, general audiences. GP, all ages admitted, parental guidance suggested. R, restricted, under 17 requires accompanying parent or adult guardian. 
X, no one under 17 admitted. Men, there's a drive-in movie full of juicy people. Wow! A pleasant aroma for you, but not for mosquitoes. Pick is easy to use. Light it and forget it. Pick's aroma keeps mosquitoes, gnats, and sand flies away. Pick is the best protection for barbecues, fishing and camping trips, or just relaxing in the yard. So if you don't want our company ever anywhere, just like Pick and see what I mean? Bye! Pick is on sale at the refreshment stand now. Snow cone, please. Cut. What's with this snow cone bit? The word is water. But I want a snow cone. Now let's try it again. Now this time stick to the script. Okay. Action. Water. Water, please. So I get water. But where you are, you can get snow cones. Bring me one, will you please? Any flavor. It's one minute till showtime. You hungry? Looking for a tempting treat? Hold on till I absorb some heat. Some added tang might please you, too. I'll slide into an oven-fresh bun, and I'm ready for your eating fun. Why don't you try a juicy, good hot dog? Mmm, delicious. What do you say? Try your luck. Break a balloon, win a baboon, right over here. <laughs> they didn't know that in that wild, frenzied ride, they'd pass from the living. This picture begins where Hitchcock stopped and climaxes in nerve-shattering terror. I had to kill him. Carnival of Blood. A colorful merry-go-round of death. I'm so so taking it so long. Get out of line, and you're in the carnival of blood. You got a girlfriend? This game, the best prize you can win is your life. Stan, you're sick. You bitch! the unfolding of these detailed events with a friend, someone who might remain unchanged throughout this traumatic experience. Carnival of Blood, a Kurt Films presentation, coming to this theater soon. And another bloody chiller. Nestled in the California foothills. A timeless place where past and present merge. Cursed 
of the headless horse. Violence rages as an age-old curse comes to life, leaving death in its trail. Terror and a new excitement explodes on the screen. of the Headless Horseman, coming to this theater soon. Rated PG. And now, on with the show. Be them, Sam. It's almost 1930 hours. They would have left an hour ago. I think that's him. Hear him, Sam, real low. Watch, above those trees. Are they really coming, Sergeant? You wait. They do this every night. Sam, what's that? Right through there. I don't like it when you say they're coming, Sergeant. It scares me. It's all right, Sam. It's all right now. Shall I tell him, Jane? Yes, and you both come away from the window. It's been longer than ten minutes now. Sergeant Jackson, Janie says it's all right, Jane. Come on, it's all right. Janie, if they do come, will I see them? No one's ever seen them, Sam. Now let's not be late for supper again, shall we? baby again. All right, Harriet, I won't touch your baby. You better not. You know what will happen to you. I'll, I'll kill you. I swear to God, I'll kill you. Ready to eat, Sam? Oh, every night. Dr. Stevens makes me eat the soup. I bet you don't know how many kinds of soup I've eaten, Jane. Come on, guess. I don't know, Sam. Janie, when can we put my boat in the water? Sam, there's something I've got to tell you. We've been friends for a long time now. But I'm going to have to leave now. I'm going to have to say goodbye. Goodbye? That means you're going to leave me, Janie? We can't play with the boat? I'm sorry. Oh, I miss you, Sam. But I just can't take this any longer. Oh, I know you don't understand. When you're ready, come eat your supper. I'll be in to join you later on. Right now, I have to go and talk to Dr. Stevens. Jane is going away. Would you have me put my body in the water? I bet Janie didn't say goodbye to you, neither. I bet you.
Use the axe, Judge. Listen to me, Judge. Use the axe, Judge. Go ahead, Judge. Use the axe. Use it. Again, Judge. Once more again. Strike out. Harder, Judge. Now again. That's it, Judge. Hit it again. And again. Strike it. Strike it. Dr. Stevens, I must speak to you. Yes? What is it, Jane? I... He's doing very well tonight. Can you sense how each stroke reaches down, freeing some part of his conflict? Perhaps just a cell or two of the unconscious brain, yet he's reaching it. Reach for it, Judge! Dr. Stevens! Yes? Doctor, I've come to a decision about... about all this. I just can't take it any longer. Harriet threatened me again tonight. I'm leaving. I... Well, you said you had someone else coming out tonight, someone to help. I can't accept that decision, Janie. You're a professional. I won't allow you to do it. Put it down, Judge! Put it down, Judge! Put it down! Judge! 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 Put it down, Judge. Put it down, Judge! Put it down! That's right. Oh, God. Oh, how did this happen? I don't know. Oh, get out of here. Judge. Judge. We're not going to do anything foolish. Get the ax, Sam. Very quietly, we're going to walk into the house. Come on, Judge. Don't look at Dr. Stevens. I'm going to help you. Come on, quietly. Quietly, calmly. That's right. Into the house. I'm coming with you. That's right, Judge. Sam, put the ax down on the ground. take care of Cameron and Janie and all the others. Do you understand? But Jane is leaving. Oh? oh? All right, listen to me. I'll be back in a few minutes to tell you what to do with Dr. Stevens. Do you understand me? I'm coming, Judge. That's right, quietly, calmly.
Lady. The lady. Go to your room now, Sam. Have you been standing there long? Why, no. In fact, I just this minute came in. I didn't see anyone. I'm Dr. Masters, Geraldine Masters. Am I expecting you? Well, perhaps Dr. Stevens hasn't mentioned my coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Charlotte Beale, RN Psychiatric Therapy. Beale? Yes, I'm to get settled in tonight. I'm starting with Dr. Stevens first thing in the morning. Well, perhaps you'd better go into my office this way. Now, would you mind telling me again just who you are and exactly what you're doing here? Dr. Masters, I'm sorry you haven't been informed about my coming. You see, Dr. Stevens hired me, oh, about a week ago, I think it was. Yes, on the 20th. I had heard about Dr. Stevens' unusual psychiatric methods and called for an interview. He liked my training and background and said he was terribly short on qualified help and asked if I would start this next week, which is today. Now, 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 just wait a minute, Miss Beale. First of all, I was not informed about your coming here. And secondly, I feel sure that Dr. Stevens would have brought this up with me if he'd reached a decision about you. <laughs> Dr. Masters, certainly there can't be a mistake. Oh, perhaps it's just an oversight. And you That's just the point, Miss Beale. Dr. Stevens would not have made an oversight. Not about something as important as increasing our staff, not when there are just three of us. Uh, normally, three of us on the staff. You know, perhaps I really should go in to see the doctor. He's expecting Ms. me. Ms. Beale. I have something very unpleasant to tell you. We've, uh, we've had a tragedy here. We've lost Dr. Stevens. He was viciously attacked by one of the patients, and he died shortly afterwards. So you, you can see this is just not the time to discuss any of this. Well, surely you can understand how his death has greatly changed things. Naturally, I've, I've taken over in his place. But since I wasn't informed about your coming here, I, I feel no need to keep any minor commitment that he may have made. Well, certainly not now. You see, I'm, uh, I'm changing some administrative objectives, and uh, what Dr. Stevens had in mind may not be exactly what I'm planning. Well, not now. I just can't believe Dr. Stevens is dead. We have to accept that, Miss Beale. I just don't believe you could be of any help right now. Dr. Masters, I gave up a perfectly good job to come here. They wanted me to stay, but I left. Well, what place are you talking about? Green Park General Hospital. I was supervisor of the South Beale, I'm not Board. questioning your qualifications. Did Dr. Stevens talk with your supervisor about your leaving? Oh, I'm sure he did. Besides, I showed uh, them this letter of acceptance from Dr. Stevens. Then they uh, knew about your coming here, then? Why, yes. Do you... Uh have any place to go from here, Miss Beale? Well, frankly, no. Unless, of course, Green Park would consider taking me back. I suppose I could tell them what's happened here about Dr. Stevens and about your taking over. Perhaps they would make some sort of consideration. I... Miss Beale, frankly, I, I, I have a very difficult decision. There have been some abnormal reactions with a few of the patients. Dr. Stevens trusted them. He treated them as though he were their father. So realistically, this has been a death in the family. Now my job is to recreate that trust. I doubt seriously that Green Park would take you back and it would be very awkward trying to explain all of this, so... Uh, well, since you're here and Dr. Stevens did make the commitment, I guess you might as well start in the morning. Thank you, Dr. Master. Now, you must understand that I'm not offering you anything of a permanent nature. It takes a very special attitude to work here. Dr. Stevens told me that. Dr. Stevens believed that insanity was not a breaking away from reality, but rather a very complex series 
of obsessions. Psychiatrists have always tried to reverse that, you know, bring the patient back to normalcy, but Dr. Stevens believed the opposite. He believed that, that these obsessions could be pushed, forced, to grow so large, so ominous, that the patient would have to use his own strength to destroy them. Yeah, that's a very interesting theory. We live and work very simply here, Miss Beale. Our patients are all people who are unloved, unwanted, forgotten. So we're a family, their family, and everyone helps with the chores. Well, now, I'll, I'll show you to your room. I'm afraid there's no connecting back. I hope you'll be comfortable. I have a lot of things to do now, so if you'll come into my office in the morning, we can go over your routine. Thank you, Dr. Masters. Good night. Oh, Dr. Masters, where are the patients' rooms? Well, they're uh, right next to yours, and upstairs. As I said before, we're a family, and it's for that reason there are no locks on any of the doors. Dr. Stevens didn't believe in the doctor-patient relationship. Good night. Good night. Yours. Up the airy mountain, down the rushing glen. You never can go hunting for fear of little men. Stevens tells me what he wants. Sam. He's very sad this morning. Why is he sad, Sam? Because everything's changed now. Like that Miss Charlotte and that some others. My baby's very sleepy. Very sleepy. Charlotte's name is Miss Beale. That's what you're supposed to call her. Dr. Stevens calls the Miss Charlotte. He's very worried this morning. Oh, hush it up, Sam. Leave us alone. Sam! Janet didn't say goodbye to you. She wasn't your friend. Sam, it's time. Are you ready? Oh, shoot, Sergeant. Do I have to? Oh, all right. Prisoner's inside. Guard that door carefully. Oh, all right, Sergeant. 
What do you want me to stand? Reggie? That's right. And you'll not leave it. Oh, sir. Are you coming back? That's Danny. Yes? The guard is posted, sir. Jennifer? Yes. The prisoner is secure, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. That was Sam's friend, Jaffe. Yes, we call him Sergeant. Difficult case, war. He was or is a real Sergeant. His uh, platoon was lost in combat because of something he did. His prisoner, as he calls her, is Jennifer Downey. I want you to uh, watch her very carefully, spend some time with her. Several times she's attempted to escape. Escape? In the sergeant's jargon, to uh, break confinement. Sam, I've told you not to interrupt me when I'm busy. But, Dean, what you want me to do with Sam, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. Go on now. Go on. And that's Sam. Sam. Sam is a lovable child. He's been a patient of Dr. Stevens for several years. And Dr. Stevens operated on him three, no, four years ago. Dr. Stevens allowed me to assist him in that operation. Drilling through the frontal lobe left Sam harmless, but with the mentality of an eight-year-old. That was the last lobotomy Dr. Stevens ever did. And it was because of that operation that Dr. Stevens turned from surgery to his obsession development theory. Tell me about Allison King. Allison? Let's see. Allison has had a very unfortunate past. She was very close to her father, and he died. She was 13. Then her mother remarried a man that Allison absolutely cherished, and he left. And that was the beginning of the pattern. Allison tried to love other men, cruel to her, and they left her, and she almost gave up. It's a classic pattern, isn't it? Mm. Then Allison met a man. She thought he was perfect. He loved her, and they lived together, but he used her. He sold her to other men. Well, her love for him smoothed that over. But then someone came along that was younger and prettier, and he threw her out. And that was the breaking point. What is her attitude now? She craves love, desperately, from anyone, everyone. And these others, Harriet and Mr. Cameron? Judge Cameron. My name is Oliver W. Cameron, Juris Consult, Judicator of the Court of Appeals, Doctor of Jurisprudence. What are you doing in my room? Well, I really dig all that mumbo-jumbo. You know, it's just quality. What is that odor? Strawberry. Do you like strawberry? Ripe strawberries are the color of blood. Taste me. Please. Taste me. I can be anything you want. <laughs> to be carnally minded is death. Come on. I do taste like strawberries. Taste me. Shroud your nakedness. You're obscene. I'm, I'm warm and I'm loving. I have, I'm loving. I'm passion. Men love me. There's not a man anywhere who doesn't really love my body and soul. Stop. <laughs> you freak. <laughs> you don't want to be touched because you're so damn pure. You phony freak, you're 
trembling look at you. You're hot for it, but you can't reach out. You can't reach out. You can't love. You can't make it. But I can't! Rejection can be a very painful experience. Well, um... Tell you about the others later, but right now I'd like for you to start with Mrs. Callingham. Oh, yes, Mrs. Callingham is the one who occasionally hallucinates. Oh, yes, she has a number of interesting worlds. Why don't you take her for a walk? She likes the flowers. She sometimes believes they're her children. It's pleasant here, don't you think, Mrs. Callingham? Do you get out often? It's you who need to get out. <laughs> yes, I remember. You were going to tell me why. Oh, up the airy mountain, down the rushing glen, we cannot go a-hunting because of little men. Oh, Bobby, Ellen. Stevens. He don't call on the phone anymore. Sam, I know how much Dr. Stevens liked you. Dr. Stevens wants us happy. He said I should tell you. Sam, I understand. Dr. Stevens is still very real for you. Oh, Miss Charlotte, I, I forget what the doctor told me to tell you. I, I knew it a minute ago. Sam, it's all right. I understand. bother you when you're busy. Well, that's all right. Have a chair. It's about my phone. Well, patients seem to be accepting you. Well, that's important. I suppose you've noticed that it's the little things that count most with them, especially Danny and, of course, Sam. You're very fond of Sam, aren't you? Yes, very. Dr. Stevens was very close to him, too. Sam's lost his intelligence, but he has very deep feelings, perhaps deeper than ours. Oh, Dr. Masters, I'm... Oh, don't be alarmed. This is Jennifer. Occasionally, she becomes very withdrawn, and naturally, I like her to be with me when that happens. Is she beyond help? Beyond help? To say that means that we've given up, and we never give up. No one's beyond us. We're always getting closer. Yes, of course. Please don't misunderstand. No, 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 I understand. Oh, it's time to be getting them to bed. I promised Sam that I'd read to him. Would you mind seeing to the others? No, of course not. Dr. Masters, I hope you'll forgive my statement about Jennifer. I simply meant that I... It's just that you're not quite used to all our little family yet, Miss Beale. One day you'll be as close to them as brothers and sisters. Good night. Good night. Well, Dr. Masters, before I forget, I wanted to tell you that my phone is not working. I was wondering if you're having the same trouble. No. Well, that occasionally happens. I'll try to take care of it. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night, Harriet. She's asleep. And it's time you should be asleep, too. Good night. Mrs. Callingham. Uh, oh, you liked our walk in the garden, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, don't be surprised if we never go again. Don't mind my observing. You handle Mrs. Callingham very well. Better than some of the others.
Jennifer. understand that ours is a family of persons who know very few limits, even the limits of physical pain. When, when Mrs. Callingham did this to herself, she was probably beyond the threshold of physical feeling. My greatest concern about her is the blood that she's lost. She's very weak. I don't hold up very well, do I? I'm sorry. It, it's just the thought of our old being asleep. She was probably hallucinating. Self-infliction of pain, self-disfigurement, sometimes that indicates that the patient has transcended the body. Oh, what would Dr. Stevens have done in a case such as this? Exactly as I'm doing, calling as little attention to it as possible. Now she's received treatment. Now she has to accept what she's done. For the time being, I, I wouldn't discuss this with any of the others. Dr. Masters. Aren't you ever afraid? I'm always afraid. Show me where the equipment is. What trouble are you talking about, sir? Well, I don't know yet. It's uh, it's something with your voltage drop. Well, never mind. I'll, I'll find it myself. Say, how come you people didn't call? I mean, about the telephone. It can't be working. My name is Oliver W. Cameron, Juris Consult, Judicator of the Court of Appeals, Doctor of Jurisprudence. Well, that's got to be some big problem. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Cat got her tongue? I warn you. Heed the lady's advice. What did she say? <laughs> she said, your being here represents grave danger. <laughs> oh, lady, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't know. She ain't got no tongue. Objection all ruled. That is immaterial, irrelevant, and... out of order. Oh, they let you people just wander around out here, huh? Hey, buddy, how about give me back my screwdriver, huh? I will conduct you to my chambers. No, 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 that, that, that's quite all right. Uh, look, here's what we'll do. You, you people just, just wait right here, okay? And, and I'll go and, and find the equipment, all right? And if I'm not back in three minutes, why, you people can go and hide, okay? That's an awful virus you got there, lady. Who 
are you and exactly how did you enter this building? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. First, which way are you? I mean, this way or that way? I don't know what you're talking about, and I want you to answer my question. I'm, I'm sorry, Doctor. It's just that, well, you've got so many twilight people around here, you know, and, well... Exactly. What are you intending to do here? It's your phone. I mean, we've been getting some strange readings on your voltage lately, and, well, I just came out to check it as quick as I could and get the hell out of here. Why didn't you inform me of your coming here? How could I inform you? You ain't got no telephone. You've uh, got bouncers on every door and a receptionist that ain't got no tongue. What's the inform? That's enough of your impertinence. You had absolutely no right to enter this building without my permission. So what am I going to do? I'm supposed to fix the telephone. You want me to fix the phone? You don't want me to fix the phone. It don't matter to me. I'm just the phone man. Now, I drove for an hour to get out here. You tell me. All right, this way. in this closet. Please don't leave the area. I'll be back in a few minutes to escort you out of the building. And under no circumstances are you to have anything more to do with any of the patients. Now, is that understood? Whatever you say, Doc. I'm just trying to help. You know what I mean? Shouldn't take too long, huh? No. One of the lines was cut. It'll just take a minute. You, uh, you do understand me, don't you? You know, I... I used to live in this place where the phone man was always coming around. Oh, yeah? That bad, huh? Uh, that good. <laughs> I, I, I thought you meant that, that you had a lot of phone trouble. Hell, I didn't even have a phone. <laughs> Who let you in anyway, honey? Uh, I don't know her name. The, the doctor, I guess. She let you in? Yes, yeah, sort of. She is the boss, isn't she? You know, you know you're kind of handsome. What's your name? Now, look, honey, I'm, I'm just the telephone man. Don't be afraid. Look, sweetheart, uh, you're a good-looking gal and all that, but this ain't my bag. Not, not in the closet, it ain't. Now, cut it out. I ain't even supposed to be talking to you or nothing. Don't be afraid. Don't back away from me. You love me. You do love me. Say it. All right, Arithi, I, I, I loved you. Now, cut it out. Huh? Oh, you love me. You do love me. Oh, I'm a princess. Oh, I'm a princess to men. They can't turn away from me. They, they grasp me and kiss my breast. Don't push me away! You said you loved me. You said that you loved me! No, cut it out. Love is pure. Love is grace. Love is strength. You love me. Your love is pure. You'll always love me. <gasps> now look what you've done. I've got a secret. I've got a secret. And I ain't gonna tell nobody but Miss Charlotte. You're doing fine now, Mrs. Callingham, but you need to rest. You've been up and around too much. You hurry! 
Daddy! She's fooling! I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry you shouldn't have scared me. You won't tell on me, will you, Daddy? You won't tell on me, will you? You won't put on me, will you, Daddy? any point in our talking about your leaving, Miss Beale. You forget you were very anxious to take this job. I made special provisions for you to be here. I realize that, but I don't know what to do. I'm the doctor and you're the nurse, and what I do decides what you will do. Some night soon. The doctor's going to help you, Judge Cameron. Gibberish. The doctor will help you. Masters has nothing to give me. I ain't talking about Deanie. I doubt that you know what it is you are talking about. I wish you would go. Dr. Stevens knows Miss Charlotte. And Miss Charlotte knows Dr. Stevens. That's right. He's going to help her, too. He don't want to hear just now. Denny wants her, though. Denny told me. Of course, Masters doesn't want Beale to leave, you idiot. Sometimes, Dr. Stevens tells me about Miss Charlotte. Yeah. I want you to go sweep the kitchen. Then can I have a popsicle? 
Yes, you can have a popsicle. <laughs> Ah, oh, Sam's beautiful, isn't he, Judge? No past, no future, only the present. For him, Dr. Stevens will always be in the present. Wish we could all think of him that way. Judge. Judge, your floor is dirty. Now, it's your responsibility to keep your room clean. I want you to take care of it now. You had a real baby once, didn't you, honey? This is my baby. Geez, I feel sorry for you. You really think that's a real baby? Baby? Yeah. Now get off, you moron! My name is Oliver W. Cameron, adjudicator of the Court of Special Sessions. Please examine the evidence. Judge, can you be a man to me? My name is Oliver W. I'm asking you. My name? Yes, please. Love me. I need somebody to love me. But don't touch me. You're all alike. Danny. Jeffy. I love you. Have it! And you trying to be so high and mighty. Get out! Get out! No, 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 just no, no. I, I need you to help me. About something else, I mean. Maybe he's gone. 
think maybe he's looking for me and he can't find me. He's the most beautiful man anywhere. And he loves me. You always did have an eye for such things. Judge, he wants me. Naturally, I must weigh this new evidence very carefully. Oh, Judge, please! <laughs> Sarge. Let me see. Back off, they're on their way. Let me see. Move it. There's nothing there. You're crazy. to adhere to my discipline. Haven't I told you what time the lights are to be out at night in every room? Yes, sir, you have. I take it then that you're contesting my discipline, is that it? Answer me. My authority here in the sanitarium is going to remain absolute, unchallenged, and totally unimpeachable. Do you understand? going to never be challenged again, do you understand? My office, my profession, my charge, my liability, my suffering for your good. Never to tip the fine balance of all that ever again.
morning, Sam. What could be troubling you this early? A whole lot of things, Miss Charlotte. Oh? Such as what? Dr. Stevens. He's worried about things. Oh, I see. He wanted me to talk to you. What have you got there? Where did you get this? Who gave you this, Sam? He said you'd know. You'd understand. He wants to help you, Miss Charlotte. Who wants to help me? What are you talking about? The doctor. Oh, Dr. Stevens, I suppose. Well, thank you very much, Sam. But I think we should talk less foolishly about all this. I'm the only one who could tell you, Miss Charlotte. Dr. Stevens is going to help you, if you take the watch. This kind of day seems to take away all your troubles. <sighs> For a while, anyway. Do you have a family, Daddy? I thought you mentioned your mother once. Where did you live when you were young? Miami Beach. Oh, yes. Your mother was in business, wasn't she? Yeah. Massage parlor. <laughs> I remember. Is it for you? <laughs> Thank you, Danny. I guess it's time we should go in. Sure. destinies for so many lives. Sure, they're missing. Very sure. They were taken from a new container. Oh, this is really quite serious. Have you checked all the rooms? Oh, just about, except for Danny's and Jennifer's. But you have checked uh, Cameron's and Jaffe's rooms. Oh, I checked those first. Well, I'll have to go over all of this personally. Thank you.
Dini! 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 I can't find her anywhere. I've got to find her. Well, what is it? What do you want with her? I've got to show her. Down where I got the popsicle. What is it? What's down there? Come on. Come on, I'll show you. Sam, I don't have time to play right now. I'm busy. Come on. Come on, I'll show you. Come on, Virginia. I'll show you. Sam, what is it? Come on. Are you just putting me on?
her that she'll kill anybody that threatens to expose her, and she'll kill you. informed about you. The verdict is unanimous. You too are a patient, my dear. Get you something to help you sleep. No. I'm not going anywhere. You're not going to touch me. We know all about that sleep. Your little doctor bit's over. Yeah, that's right. I told Miss Beale, she knows. What does she know? Does she know how I worked? How I trained? To be the best? And I could have been. Except for one insignificant lie. My mistake. I could have saved thousands. And I will. I'll help everyone. I'll help you, Allison. Hold out your arm. And you told me she was a patient, too. Give me your arm. Don't you touch me with that. No! You shouldn't have done that. I... I can't sleep now. I, I have to take care of my patients. Operator. Why don't you work? Miss 
No use. I can't find a way out. Everything's all right now. Don't worry. Oh, my God. It's all right. I told you. You don't have to worry about her anymore. Don't worry about it. I've taken care of everything. Allison, you've got to tell me! Doesn't really matter anymore, you know. I'm going away. You're going away? What are you talking about? He's taking me away. He still loves me, you know. He told me so. Wedding night. Sergeant Javits, 2300 hours. It'll be coming soon. Sergeant, do you oh, know what's happening quiet. here? I have my orders. Sergeant. Sergeant. They're in the attic. This building. Or an outside door. We've got to get out of here. They'll be coming soon. Go to your post. I've been looking all over for you. Here. What is it, Sam? Dr. Stevens said you should read it. What? Take it, Miss Charlotte. Where is she? 
Who? The patient, Miss Beale. She's got to get out of here. Oh, no. No, she, she's, she's sick. I, I've got to help her. I've got to find her. It's too late. The trial has been held. The verdict is guilty. Who are you to make a decision? I'm in charge. I'm the doctor here. The court has made a decision. You are no longer in charge. I am in charge. I am in charge! I allowed you privileges and liberties. Even after what you did to Dr. Stevens, I let you keep your little toy. I wouldn't take that away. I'll take it away. I'll take it away. I locked you in your room. Where is she? My name is Oliver W. Cameron. Where is she? Consult her. Name? is coming back. Sam. 
and she's so sick. So sick. We, we've got to help her, Sam. Go in and cut out the sickness and return her to innocence. Thank you. Hungry? Thirsty? The refreshment stand is open with everything to satisfy your taste buds. Here's the menu, the hottest, freshest, crunchiest popcorn. Each kernel popped to its fullest with that real movie time taste. Cold drinks. You'll find your favorite ice cold, tasty, and thirst quenching. And hot dogs, hamburgers, and candy too. Now a short intermission, so you'll have time to make your selection before the show begins. 
top quality hamburgers, the most popular snack in the country. We serve them plain or garnished to your taste. Hot dogs, the all-American favorite. Certainly we serve them, piping hot and full of flavor. Call for yours now. beverages, and other delicious snacks. So add to your fun of watching the movie now during our 10-minute intermission. Glad to have you with us tonight. We hope you'll come to see us often. It's great to get out to the movies. Especially for you. Try our delicious hamburgers. Come and get them at the concession stand. Time? Sure, there's still time to visit our fine snack bar where we offer a wide variety of good things to eat and drink to top off your evening. Want a suggestion? How about enjoying a treat we're famous for? A refreshing cup of smooth, chocolatey, good Jubilee hot chocolate. Such a comforting, special kind of drink and a favorite with folks of all ages. Hot chocolate goes down real easy this time of night, makes you feel warm and altogether wonderful. Bet you've never tasted hot chocolate quite as good as we make it. Enjoy a cup tonight. Hot dogs with your favorite trimming for men and boys, girls and women. Dress them up to suit your taste. They're good. So good. Today we're interviewing a stomach. Hello there. What is life like as a stomach? Oh boy, it was humdrum. I mean, until what's his name discovered Tony's Pizza. Tony's Pizza? Yeah, I was suffering from the pizza cravings until Tony's came along. Crispy crust and zesty sauces. <laughs> wow. And so now... What's that? Another pizza craving. Just thinking about Tony's sets it off. Oh, wh where are you going? He's going to get a Tony's Pizza. And I follow him anyway. Does your stomach send you pizza craving signals? 
Oh, wow. Tony's, the Pizza Cravers Pizza. Available at the concession stand. Wouldn't some hot buttered popcorn hit the spot right now? Extra fluffy, extra big kernels of it pop to perfection. Then drenched with the golden goodness of pure sweet creamery butter. Can't you just taste it? We heap the container extra high, but <laughs> you better buy two more for the rest of the family. Piping hot golden buttered popcorn at the refreshment center right now. <laughs> And now, meet the star of our show. Symbol of a treat that quality made famous. America's most famous ice cream treat, Eskimo pie. Creamy, delicious ice cream made even more exciting with smooth, rich chocolate coating. And wearing the label of quality known the world over. Eskimo pie, the treat you know is tops because it carries its pledge of quality right on the back of the bag. Be sure you save the bags for valuable premiums. Get famous Eskimo pie at our refreshment stand now. It's America's anytime taste treat. Finest ice cream, finest chocolate. It's delicious. Visit us often and enjoy our screen attractions in the comfort of your own car. It's showtime. If you are alone. 
don't answer the phone. He is out there, somewhere in the crowd, behind you, beside you, ready to kill again. No attempt to conceal the body. It's almost like he wanted to be discovered. The nurse, the starlet, the student, the secretary. I am frightened of you. What does that do to you? Oh, man. I kill and rape them all. No one can stop me. You recognize this person? Because I'm too strong. To the phone. Rated R. In this house, 25 years ago, a child was given life. Donald, come here. He was raised in isolation. You're a bad boy. Instructed in fear. You're evil and you must be punished. Imprisoned by a tormented mind. Your father let you do things like that, but he's gone now and baptized in flames. Now, he has come of age. His suffering has ended, and ours is about to begin. Tomorrow! You hear that, old lady? I'll punish you again! If you would be spared from the fury of his vengeance, <laughs> whatever you do, don't go in the house. Stairway by stairway, he draws you closer to madness. Oh, God! And soon, he'll share the terrifying secret behind this door in the Room of Steel. Holy. Don't make me do anything bad, Mother. Don't go in the house, <laughs> because the people who live there aren't people anymore. Don't go in the house. But if you do, don't say we didn't warn you. Don't go in the house. Don't go in the house. Don't go in the house. But if you do, don't say we didn't warn you. Don't go in the house. Since the dawn of time, Man has been plagued by the evil curse of the lusting vampires. The living dead have risen again. Don't go near the park. Keep out. This park is not for playing. The horrible truth will curdle your blood. They rise from the grave to wreak their ritualistic vengeance on the living. Zombies on a rampage of blood and terror. Don't go near the park. The gruesome reality more shocking than your most horrifying nightmares. There is no escape from the supernatural fiends that stalk your soul. Beware, you have been warned. Keep out. This park is not for play. Don't go near the park. Coming soon. Rated R. And now, on with the show.
out there. What you doing over here? Well, I had to get out of there for a few minutes. Anyway, she's asleep. Going back over there. Well, I don't like it. She ought to be in a hospital. That's for me and Crawford to worry about. Well, it's for me to worry about. I'm the one that has to take care of her. I'm damn sick of it. I'm damn sick of your complaining. Crawford's the doctor. He'll handle it. Crawford's a fool. He'll do anything you say. <laughs> That's for Crawford to worry about. Look, I think I know what you're doing, and I don't like it. You don't know nothing. Are you no, you listen to me. I stuck by you all these years. Take care of you when you're sick. Sleep with you. At your convenience. Well, I've seen you do a lot of things, and I kept my mouth shut. But I've never seen you do nothing like this. What is that medicine I'm giving her anyway? Annie, one thing you never used to do was stick your nose in my business. And you'd better not start doing it now, in your old age. Well, I want you to call her granddaughter. Damn it, keep out of this. I don't want that girl here meddling in my business. Go on back over there and take care of Miss Harriet like I'm telling you. You're not going to call her? Well, then I am. <laughs> Now, you listen good, because I'm only going to say this one time. Don't call that girl. <coughs> you understand? Now, you get your butt back on over there and do what I'm telling you. Let's just talk it out. I don't have time, Nick. I have to leave again right now. Where to this time? Where I'm going is none of your business. Damn it, it is my business. Look, we are not together anymore. Do you understand? Is that all? Nick, I'm going to Allerton. My grandmother's very ill. She may be dying. It's been 13 years since I've been there. 13 years. I left when my mother died. My grandma wrote from time to time. And we talked on the phone occasionally. I always told myself she didn't really need me anymore. Now I guess she does. I could never bring myself to go back to that town. And that house. That house of the seasons.
Mom, you called. Wrong number, honey. Don't worry about it. Just go to sleep. Good night. Good night.
me, Grandma. Amanda. I'm here, Grandma. I can't hear you, Grandma. What are you doing? Who are you? I'm Mrs. Post's granddaughter, and I come to be with her. Oh, yes, Amanda. Uh, Rita Post's little girl. Come back. Surprised? Well, um, we, we haven't seen you in such a long time. Oh, well, my home's in Dallas now. Ah, uh -huh. Well, I'm Dr. Crawler. Oh, yes. I remember you. Uh, uh, won't you come into the dining room? I've given her a sedative, and she shouldn't be disturbed. Well, who's been taking care of her? Oh, we've had uh, very, very confident help. What's wrong with her? Many things. She's uh, very old, you know. Your grandmother is a very independent lady. She wanted no one around to do things for her, and consequently, she was quite ill for many days before I was even aware of her serious condition. <laughs> Shouldn't she be in a hospital? No, not necessarily. This isn't the best place for a sick person. You have to admit that. No, I don't, Miss Post. You're being presumptuous. Your grandmother was very attached to this old place. Who's that? Who else is in this house? But that couldn't be Amanda. That couldn't be Amanda. Yeah, but if it is, the woman called her. Miss Post. Oh, I remember you. You're Mr. Judge. We call him the. I look in on Miss Harriet. Well, uh, you've grown up, Miss Post. I can see that in your eyes, Judge. <laughs> I am delighted to see you again, Miss Post. Mr. Kern, it's been a long time. I'd like to speak to you privately concerning some affairs that are very important to this town. Claude? This is none of your business, Judge. He wants you to give him this house. That's not the truth. It's not for me, it's for posterity. You make it sound so mercenary. It is mercenary. He's been hanging around this house like a vulture ever since Miss Harriet took ill trying to add to his collection. That is a lie. Came here to see my grandmother. And I walked into a... Well, it's just ridiculous. Dr. Crawther, I want my grandmother in a hospital. That is not your decision to make, Mr. Nor is it yours, Judge. It was your grandmother's decision, and she decided... Can't even talk! She's in no condition to make that decision anymore. You seem to be very suddenly concerned, Miss Post. Some 13 years. You seem to be very strangely concerned, Judge. I want my grandmother admitted. I'll do no such thing. All right. I'll find someone who will. Very well. If you should need me, I'll be in my office. You'll find a list of Miss Harriet's medications on the table. Now, is there anything else? You made a mistake, Miss Post. Dr. Crawler is very well thought of hereabouts will be difficult to find anyone to admit her. That's the least of my problems. By the way, I'm fairly well thought of hereabouts, too. Yes, I'm sure you are. You stay in here? Why not? Oh, just a pretty little old thing like you all alone in this big, rambly old house. You never can tell. But then you're a big girl now. 
You take care now. Yeah. Well? I uh, hope you'll come and see me at the museum soon. It's been a long time. We've grown. We are very proud of it. I'll come soon, Mr. Kern. I hope you'll excuse. But you can't scare me.
Dr. Cabrici, please. Dr. Cabrici. Nick? Mandy. Hello, Miss Post. Oh, come on, Nick. Listen, I need your help. Grandma's really sick. I think she ought to be in the hospital. Well, where is she if she isn't? Well, she's here at the house. Her doctor won't admit her. He says she's better off here. Well, he should know. Nick, she needs to be in a hospital. <laughs> Good old man. Did you tell him that? Andy. Andy, is something the matter? No. Will you come? I'll be there tonight.
You almost get it. Why didn't you knock or something? You scared me to death. I did. No one answered. Oh. What's that for? Oh, I just got frightened. Some silly phone call. Who was it? Some jerk getting his jollies. A breather? Just your standard class B obscene caller. How is she? I haven't had time to examine her. Hey, you look pretty cute. You just take care of your patient, huh? How's she doing? Not so good. Mandy, how long has she been asleep? Oh, about. My God, since I've been here. Noon, 12.30? Well, how many of these did you give her? One at four, like it says to. I don't understand. Who is this Crawford guy? Why? I want to talk to him. There's something wrong here. She must be getting s something else. My God. 
I want her admitted first thing in the morning. She'll be all right here for the night. Okay, Mr. Post, how about me? Do I stay here or uh, at a motel? Here. Oh. Sorry, sir. It happens to be a single. Well, that beats twelve fifty, I guess. Now, what do you think? What are All you right, doing Nick. Now, what were you doing in my room? I haven't been in your room. I'm I not didn't... in the mood for funnies, Nick. You came in. I know you did. I saw you go down the stairs. Baby, if I'd been in your room, I'd still be in there. You must have been dreaming. something about a museum. Does that mean anything to you? No, I don't think so. Get on the phone and get that ambulance here. Okay. May I ask, who are you, sir? I'm Dr. Crawler in charge of this case. You were a doctor. I see. Don't you walk out on me, Doctor. I have some questions. You're impertinent, young man. Tell me, Doctor, why haven't you had her admitted? Because she insisted... She can't even talk. Doctor, I resent your implications and your haste. If you will take time to find out, you will learn that Mrs. Post did not wish to be admitted to a hospital. She preferred to remain in her own home. She is an old, old lady, much nearer death than you know, and an old lady who preferred to die in the house she was born in. Now, if you will excuse me,
You kept your promise, Miss Post. Yes, I'm glad I did. For you. A bribe, Mr. Kern? No, a tribute. <laughs> Look, Mr. Kern, it's been over 13 years since I've played here. Ah, but, but we've grown. Yes, I can see that. Aren't you curious? May I show you around? May I show you all the things that are so very precious to me. My grandmother's things are very precious to me also. surprises. This is very special, unique. You won't tell anyone about this. If you don't want me to. Promise. Promise you won't. Okay, I promise. But I really have to go after this. to be my mother? Why did you do this? You like it? No, I don't. It's sick. It's a bad joke, Mr. Kern. Wait! Now, I want my grandmother's things out of here, upstairs and downstairs. I want our things put back where they belong. I can't do that. You better, and you better fast. If you don't, we'll see what the judge can do about it. But I did it for you, for when you came back, for you to remember by. The main thing I remember is a scared little girl with a dead mother. I don't need or want to remember anything else. sooner or later. Come on in. Why, you've been keeping secrets, Judge. Take a good look around, Claude, but don't get any ideas. 
This is mine. It is beautiful. What do you want, Claude? I want to make a deal with you. I know what you and Crawler did to Miss Harriet, and I won't say anything about it. If you just make the girl leave the things in the museum, she's not to be trusted. She's just like... Just like a mother, Claude? Just like Rita? What was Rita like, Claude? Now that Amanda is back to remind us all, maybe we should talk about what happened to Rita. Hmm, Claude? Maybe you know something the rest of us don't know. Crawler should give you something, Claude. I'm no sick old lady judge. <laughs> Crawler doesn't scare me. Go on back to the museum and play with your mannequins, Claude. I don't have time for your games. The girl is going to take the things out of the museum. Stop her from doing it. Have I made you angry? I didn't mean to make you angry. I love her. I loved her when she was a little girl. I took good care of her. I taught her a lot. Don't let her go. You ever hear of knocking? You're late. 307? I was at the hospital. Look, I know this is a small town, but do you always barge right into someone else's house? This isn't your house yet, Miss Post. I'm Miss Harriet's attorney. By her parole, I may enter this house any time I please. Boy, you sure have the gall. What I have, young lady, are certain responsibilities. To whom? According to Mr. Kern. Claude's a thief. I'm a busy man, Miss Post. I don't have time to waste. I have told you that I want this house. I will be willing to buy your interest in it. Your potential interest, Miss Post. I believe this to be more than a fair price. I'll bet you do get everything you want. Well, I'll tell you what. You don't get it. Kern doesn't get it. Nobody gets it. Not while I'm around. I'll burn it first. You're a dirty old man. You just give me the keys, get out, and stay out. You're in my way, Miss Post. I'll do 
be back tonight with the papers. I think you'll change your mind. Not on your life, Judge. Miss Post, perhaps you think me a rustic fool. I assure you I'm not. I can quote great literature. Here's one of my favorites from Lewis Carroll. The king's argument was that anything that had a head could be beheaded. I'm partial to comedy. George, how have you been? Long time no hear. Shut up and listen. What is this, huh? Got a thing going? You charging admission? Why don't you come on over and tell me your funny face to face, huh? Anything wrong, George? You're damn right there is. You know what it is? You're a miserable, impotent freak. I'm not interested, so buzz off. You might be interested in your grandmother's life.
What did you say? Well, I... I said, hello, Miss Post. Look, I'm a... What's the matter? I've got to get out of here. Well, there's no place to go in Allerton. How's your grandma? What? Well, I, I said, how's your grandma? Why? Well, I'm just interested. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have got those phone calls. What? My oh, goodness, you don't look well at all. Better answer that. It might be about your grandma. I will. Oh, my God. 
Are you doing that, Miss Post? Yes. I don't think you are. so very much better acquainted. I think we should sleep now. Don't you, Amanda? Oh, yes.
hospital. Oh, Dr. Caprizi, please, it's an emergency. <laughs> Again. He, he threatened to. Andy, I don't have time now. Your grandmother's worse. But I'm scared, Nick. He, he made me. He told me to. Honey, just lock the doors and go on to bed. He isn't going to go after you in person. They never do. But he made all sorts of. Mandy, listen. Go to bed. He won't call again tonight. We'll sort this thing out in the morning, okay? Sleep tight, baby. I'll get there as soon as I can. I've got to run now. Bye. But Nick! Nick!
You're sick. I'm not sick. Don't say that ever again. You're sick! Come back here, Amanda. Come back now. <laughs> You're sick! <laughs> Give me a little kiss. With your heart. Give me a little kiss. You. What? Not me. It's him. He's crazy. He's been threatening. He's in the house. I know he is. Who's here? I don't know. Please help me. I don't know who he is. Maybe I do. We'll see. talking to. With whom am I speaking, please? Why don't you come on in the dining room and we'll settle this thing? Well, I don't think I want to do that, Judge. Why don't you come up here? All the way. Stay down here. No, please, I don't want to be alone. Everybody safe down here? I'll take care of him.
Thank <laughs> you. 